YouTube, Team Keep It Clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs. And this episode features a very, very special guest. If you are on Ravens Twitter, then you know exactly who this is. But anyway, before we get into it, Team Keep It Clean with Questions from Subs is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team. And we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Well, for the patrons, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. You can send it directly on Patreon. So I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. I appreciate y'all. Without any further ado, let's get into it. So Team Keep It Clean, on this very special episode of NFL Questions from Subs, I'm joined by my guy, Kevin Ostriker. I know I said your last name wrong, so my apologies. No, you, know, you, got, you, got you got it right. right. You got so, it right. I, so I don't mess it up moving forward. Go, what's, how do you say your last name, too? No, you, you got it right. It's Kevin Ostriker. It's a tough one. People sometimes just give it up and say ostrich. So, you know, I appreciate you making an attempt to get it right. And you did get it right. All right. I appreciate it. And I'm sure you all are familiar with him. If you're on Ravens Twitter, then you see him every single day uh, showing you memories of past Ravens events, uh, good and bad, mostly good, though. Um, and his, he always got some Ravens player retweeting his stuff and whatnot, showing love. So that's a good thing. So, um, Kevin, let people know where they can find you, what you do, and why you do it. Yeah, so I, I am on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at ChaosStriker34. I'm the host and producer of the Locked On Ravens podcast. I do that five days a week. Our content comes out Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern time. It's about 25 to 45 minutes talking Ravens every single weekday, catching up with all the latest news, analysis, updates, and everything relating to the Ravens. We're both in audio form, you know, so Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Also on YouTube as well. We're starting off that journey. We've been on YouTube for a couple of months. I also am the managing editor over at Ravens Wire. So I write about this team seven days a week. So I'm very Ravens oriented in my work. And, you know, how I started doing it, you know, really just reaching out to a couple people, seeing if I can get my foot in the door somewhere. You know, I grew up in Baltimore, so I've had connections to this team for a very long time in their history. Wanted to get in the sports industry and really got lucky. I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunities I've had. Really, it's been a really nice journey for me and, you know, looking to continue to grow. So I'm excited to be on here with you in Graven Talking Ravens. All right, cool. So appreciate that. Appreciate you hopping on. So without further ado, we got some great questions as we always do. So let's jump into it. First question came from my guy, Dylan P. He said, feed Tyson. And this has been a topic of conversation amongst a lot of Ravens fans, especially recently after they cut Le'Veon Bell. But anyway, he said, Engraven, I hope this email finds you well. If you remember, I was a big advocate for Le'Veon Bell. I knew he wasn't going to be what he used to be, but I wished he could have been productive. Uh, I used to love him as a player, other than the fact that he was a stealer. Uh, but with him getting cut now and me not wanting to be hype, wishing to see prime Le'Veon, I am on the feed Tyson Williams train. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand the fumbling issues. He had one fumble. Look at the stats that he got absolutely popped in that Chiefs game. Yeah, Freeman is cool and all, but I think we need that guy that can resemble J.K. a little bit. Rip off a big chunk play every once in a while. And use Latavius Murray like Gus more short yardage and goal line situations. I know Tyson isn't great in pass protection, but that's something J.K. struggled with early on last year and got better as the season went on. What do you think? Hope you're having a good day and enjoying the warm Florida weather. It's getting a little too cold here in B. Moore. So, Tyson Williams. Noah Kev, I'll let you start off with this one. How do you feel about Tyson Williams and what do you feel like his role should be uh, moving forward now or if he's even going to have a role? Yeah, I think he definitely does to serve some type of a role. I think, you know, everybody knows that John Harbaugh doghouse and just how hard it can be <laughs> to get out of it. And I think, you know, John Harbaugh was asked about, you know, what can Tyson Williams do to, to have a role on this team? And he, he lists out a bunch of things, you know, special teams, this, that, and the other. But at this point, you know, with Le'Veon Bell now out of Baltimore, I think now what you have is a hopefully fully healthy Latavius Murray coming back. You have Freeman, who I thought has looked better in recent weeks. I think for Williams, he can carve out himself a nice little role. The question for me is, are the Ravens going to go with him, or are they going to try or Nate McCrary? Are they going to call up Nate McCrary and say, hey, you know what, we need, to, we need a spark, we need some juice, it's going to be your time. I think Williams should get the first shot, but maybe they like what they see out of McCrary and they say, hey, you know what, we're going to give you the shot here first, and then maybe if Tyson Williams can do his thing, he can do his thing. So for me, you know, you mentioned with J.K. Dobbins, 
I mean, J.K. Dobbins, his first six games of his NFL career only got 25 carries, and the coaching staff couldn't not play him because he was doing so well. Mm -hmm. So I think for Williams, it's, it's a little different. You know, they, they, they mentioned the fumbling, and they mentioned a couple other things. But I think Williams should definitely have at least some role to see what they have in a young player because the running game has really been Lamar Jackson and right. not much else, so they need a little bit of a spark there. The next question came from my guy, Burton. He said, hope all is good with you and the fam. I'm sending you this video to get your take on what Harbaugh had the nerve and arrogance and inflated ego to say when asked about cover zero used against us. Wow. And it was a video from Harbaugh's presser uh, from a few days back when he said that uh, they, they definitely have the answers for the cover zero that, of course, uh, the Dolphins used and abused against the Ravens on Thursday night football. Um, and with, with Harbaugh's response, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with him saying that they have the answers for it, that they're ready for it. They're ready to respond to it. Um, but it's one thing is it's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to actually be about it. Now we all of course wish they would have had better answers and it wasn't just all on coaching it was on execution as well. Uh, Cause the offensive line that we have, it didn't really help that much, but it's all about, okay, that Dolphins game that's in the past. Now it's done. What are you going to do now? Because it is a copycat league. Teams do, when they see one team do something, especially against the Ravens, and it worked, they try to do the same thing too. So you know the Bears, they're going to run their uh, rendition of the cover zero or whatnot. They're going to be blitzing Lamar. They're going to be coming at him and whatnot and, and really attacking this offensive line. So show us. Show us. Show us in Chicago that you not only have an answer for cover zero, not only that, but show us that you and your coaching staff that y'all have adjustments for whatever the Bears throw at you and you have early adjustments. That's the biggest thing that I want to see. Whether it's cover zero, cover one, cover two, three, four, five, six, I don't care what coverage it is. Show that you have adjustments and early on. Kevin, what you think about John Harbaugh's response about the cover zero? Yeah, you know, it, it was cover zero that really caused the most issues. You know, that's very apparent in this game and hats off to Miami to what they were able to do against this offense. It was a lack of adjustments, and I completely agree, Engraven. I would be shocked, personally, if the Bears didn't try their hand at that cover zero look or whatever they want to do in terms of blitzing. But, you know, in terms of John Harbaugh saying, yeah, we have the answers, well, I, I hope that they do because, you know, I still, I know people aren't as confident anymore, but I'm still confident in the coaching staff to make those adjustments. It's It would be after this game where I think the concerns would start to arise for me because you have a coach who's confident in his players. The players are confident in themselves as well. There was a tough loss there against Miami, but, you know, John Harbaugh's confident in his team. He's going to say those things, and I understand why he did say it. But mm -hmm. if they can't execute against Chicago, then it's a bit of a different story because, you know, you said you have the answers, and then all of a sudden the blitz still beats you, and now you're in just a difficult situation. So I'm going to wait till the Chicago games really make any uh, assumptions based off of that. But you know what? If Harbaugh says he has the answers, then until that Chicago game is over, I, I guess I'll believe him. All right, next question came from my guy, Mac P. He said, hey, Graven, I hope everything is good for you, bro. I know you was at the game, and even though you had a good time at the Dolphins game, I'm sorry you had to watch us get beat down like that, LOL. Uh, my question is, what do you think the Ravens' ceiling is? Before all the injuries, I had us reaching the AFC Championship game and potentially the Super Bowl. But now, after watching the Dolphins and seeing the bad play calling, bad O-line, inconsistent defense, and lack of a consistent running game, I don't see how we can get past the wild card or the second round. What are your thoughts? And sorry if this is too long. P.S. I don't know if you will see this before or after, but just in case, I uh, hope you and yours are having a good one uh, and keep grinding. Road to one meal is coming sooner than you think. Appreciate it, Mac. Um, Raven ceiling. Uh, and, and, and you mentioned how after watching the Dolphins game and seeing the bad play call and just the bad everything, you don't see how we can get past the wild card game. This, uh, not only this week, um, but certainly this past week and, and last week as well, we've seen the Washington football team beat the Bucs. Uh, we saw a couple weeks ago the Jets beat the Bengals, who had just whooped us. Uh, we've seen um, the Steelers tie with the Lions, who have not won a game this season. So I, um, while the Ravens did look terrible, they looked all kinds of bad against the Dolphins. There was not much good in there, well, except for the defense, minus them giving up those big plays. It's... It just gives you a reminder that it's any given Sunday and teams can flip it on one week and they can turn it off another. So with this Ravens team, um, just 
with them being six and three right now, they, they're still in a good position to make some noise. Um, we know what the issues are. They know what the issues are. Uh, they are some, I feel like the offensive line is the, the, the toughest issue to fix um, because I feel like it's just, yeah, you, you could scheme, so you, could, you could make a better scheme to help out the offensive line a bit, but I feel like that's the toughest issue to fix because you just, you really need bodies there. You need more bodies there, healthy bodies there. Of course, we're hoping Patrick McCarry, he comes back soon. We know he practiced yesterday for the first time. Well, yesterday as of this recording, when you see this, who knows? But um, we just, I, I feel like the Ravens, they, they could still make some noise. I, I feel like all hope is not lost just because they got whooped by the Dolphins because they weren't going to go undefeated this year. They already weren't undefeated. They, they lost to a team that they probably shouldn't have lost to, but, hey, it happened. Um, so I, I've seen a lot of people saying it, and it it's makes a lot of sense that it's better that something like that happened now than happened in January in the playoffs. Uh, so I'll take that. And I, I still think they have uh, high aspirations. And this team, I, I really think they can go as far as the offensive line goes. So, Kevin, how, what do you feel the Ravens – the ceiling is this year. Yeah, well, it's funny because before the year, my exact prediction was AFC Championship game. That's exactly where I had them mm -hmm. penciled in. I still think that can be their ceiling. You know, I think that this team, I agree, engraving can make some noise. But I think we also have to take this team at face value and what they are with the injuries they've sustained this season. And just all of the lack of continuity they've had. You talked about the offensive line there. The offensive line is not only tough to fix because of the schemes, but because they've just been shuffling in guy after guy after guy. They're yeah. losing guys. They're getting guys back. And that's really tough when for an offense, for me at least, it all starts up front for, I think, a really solid Ravens unit. But if there's a defender in the backfield every one or two seconds, you know, there's not a lot of running back or a quarterback can do with that, even if your name is Lamar Jackson. And Lamar Jackson can definitely make some things happen. But it can be a lot more difficult. So I still think this is definitely a playoff team. I'd be shocked if they didn't make the playoffs this season based off of their record already and just how they've showed that even with injury after injury, they can continue to win games, whether they come from behind or the, the blowout with the Chargers that they had. They can do it. Maybe a realistic ceiling for me would be divisional round where you say, hey, look, this team has a nice wild card game if they don't get the number one seed. But to me, you mentioned that the Bucks losing to the Washington football team and the, the Jacksonville Jaguars beating the Bills. The AFC is so wide open right now. You know, the AFC mm -hmm. North is so wide open right now. We don't really know who a lot of these teams are. We're not going to know. And, and for January, the playoffs, it's a whole new season. So I think mm -hmm. that for the Ravens, they could definitely make that noise. I'm going the ultimate ceiling, probably the AFC championship game, but I think they can still make some noise, even though they have gone through a lot of injuries and, and a lot of up and down plays so far this year. All right, next question came from my guy, Manuel. He said, what's up, Engraven? Yes, you read the title right, and the title is Fire All Ravens Fans. He said, but first, let me explain why. Everyone is mad at EDC, Harbaugh, G. Rowe, Wink, and the players for that horrible loss against Miami. I do understand why I was yelling at times and wanted to shut down my TV to just play Call of Duty and get my frustrations out because no adjustments, no fixes and communication issues on both sides of the ball, no changes whatsoever on the game. And while we sit or stand watching the game unfold like what we see our Super Bowl window for the year close as we now have how the AFC is becoming. But for us fans to start and calling for people's jobs or even threatening their lives, well, I don't know about all that part. If somebody did that, that's definitely uncalled for. Um, because a one bad game has me shaking my head. Is this what we Ravens fans have become after a loss? Whining babies because we were spoiled heavy on that 2019 season. Um, on the defensive side with Ray Lewis and Ed Reed all those years too, we must all, including coaches and players, understand we can't create another Ray Lewis or Ed Reed on defense, another Yonda on offense, because they were once in a generation for us. And comparing new players to them adds pressure on their start because they already have the pressure of staying on the team and just doing great by themselves. Now, you add in the comparison of a great player to them, no wonder why some players don't stay for long recently on their teams. Yes, the front office should do a much better job getting talent on the team. Yes, the coaches should uh, be do a much better job on making adjustments. Yes, the players should execute as they should, but us fans should be much better people to them uh, and the players and the organization they support. If we don't support them in the good and the bad, then that what does that say about our family and friends? Stay safe and let's hope. This is a wake-up call for the Ravens in general. And yes, fans can be crazy sometimes, and they can take it a little too far sometimes, and that's the unfortunate part about fans. They're all not the same. Some can be reasonable, some can be unreasonable, uh, but that is uh, the life of, as a fan in the NFL. 
Um, got to take the good with the bad. Uh, and it's it's okay. It's nothing wrong with fans being frustrated at the team being frustrated because they expect better. And yeah, as Ravens fans, we are very, 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 very spoiled. Um, the Ravens have been just so used to winning. Um, and even in their down seasons, uh, they still like. Obviously, the worst recent season was the the five and eleven season, but literally everybody was hurt that year. Um, but even in seasons where they missed the playoffs, they 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 still don't have losing records and whatnot but so Ravens fans have just been so accustomed and so used to winning so accustomed and used to going to the playoffs and whatnot and so uh, used and accustomed to especially under Lamar Jackson to seeing them take care of business especially against bad teams so when stuff like this happens it's a shock it's a shock to everybody and people get upset but yeah man fans uh sometimes they just got to chill out got to relax and, and got to take a step back and realize <sighs> it's okay Kevin, how, how, you, how you feel about how fans get sometimes when it comes to these football games, especially Ravens fans? Yeah, you know, I, I'm never going to tell anybody how to be a fan. You know, I think that's a unique thing that everybody has an opinion to be. And I definitely understand being a reactionary fan, where if a bad mm -hmm. play happens, a bad game happens, all of a sudden you're like, all right, something's wrong. Like, we have to fix it now. But right. the, the nature of the NFL is, you know, these aren't one-week fixes. You know, it's not, you know one person who could you know get fired or get cut or released and all of a sudden everything's okay it could maybe help or it can maybe hurt you you never know so yeah there, there are fans who kind of say you know what everything's fine regardless of what happens there are the others who say everything is not fine regardless of what happens and you know what that's that's their that's their right that's their opinion and and i respect that but it is interesting because I think when you're looking at the Ravens and how they've been run, they've had a lot of people, a lot of skilled, talented people who know the game of football. You know, you talk about Isaac Newsom, talk about Eric DaCosta, guys who know their stuff. In the Eric DaCosta era, especially early on, we saw Eric DaCosta, you know, for, for lack of a better term, be a little bit reactionary, but he was doing it to help out a need. You know, we saw this team cut Tim Williams after that Browns game in 2019. You know, they sign guys like Josh Bynes and LJ Fort midseason to really help. They trade for Marcus Peters and, and trade away a young linebacker and Kenny Young. They make a big addition in Yanni Kingakwe at the 2020 trade deadline. So, you know, the Ravens aren't not never looking to improve their team whether that is from addition or from subtraction yeah. but i do think you know in wins in losses there are always things to take away sometimes they're more positive sometimes there are more negatives but for fans you know i, I can understand being upset you know I, I i don't think that even in a loss everybody should be happy and dandy and everything's okay and in a win you know there are still some negatives to take away too so right. you know th there are two sides to every story now you know it sometimes can get a bit extreme and that's where i kind of draw the line where i say all right that's not something you should do right. but you know i think everybody has a right to be a fan in their own way and i think that's the right way to do it all right next question came from my guy Nayib. he said do you think we should be more of a run first team i noticed lamar gains more yards on counter plays and love the show appreciate it Nayib. I think that would be impossible for Ravens to really be a run first team right now because of that offensive line, uh, because of the running backs. It's just, again, Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins are missed big time. It's, it's sad every time the Ravens tweet those team photos and you see J.K. Dobbins in there. I don't think Gus Edwards when it was in the most recent one, but it's like, man, like what, what could have been this year with the run game? And, of course, all the offensive linemen that we lost along the way, too. Um, so, no, I don't, I don't think that they – if even if they wanted to be a run first team, I, I just don't think it could happen. What about you, Keith? Yeah, you know, I think the Ravens' run game, what they can do right now to help this team – is just balance out the pass game at this point. Because, you know, I agree. Without J.K. Dobbins, without Gus Edwards, you know, even some of the offensive linemen like Ronnie Stanley or Patrick McCarry until he gets back – you know, those are players that you kind of appreciate what they bring on the football field a little bit more than maybe you did when they were on it. And, you know, that's maybe taking someone for granted or not. But I, I think that for this Ravens run game, you know, they're, they're like top five in every category. But if you're really watching this team, you know, you understand that something's not right with it because it is almost all Lamar Jackson. Devonta Freeman's looked better. Le'Veon Bell was not the answer. Latavius Murray's been injured. So for now, we've seen this passing offense take a huge leap. You know, we've seen guys like Marquise Brown step up. Rashad Bateman look really good in his actions so far. Sammy Watkins, hopefully he can get back to what he was at the beginning, the beginning of the season. And Mark Andrews is Mark Andrews. But 
in order to have a solid offense, we were kind of talking about the opposite over the last couple of seasons where, you know, the run game feeds off of the pass game and the pass game feeds off of the run game. Well, for the past couple of seasons, we were saying, you know, they need the pass game to step it up and be a little bit better. This year is they need the run game to step it up and be a little bit better. So when this team finally has a balanced attack, when everybody's healthy, when they have everybody they need and every hole is filled, I think that this team will be dangerous. But for now, I think that even if the Ravens can just have a bit more of an uptick in production. This offense can soar, but it's a matter of can they get there with the pieces they have. All right, next question came from my guy, Les. He said, Angraven, hey, hope all is well with you and the fam. Shout out to Carter. Appreciate it. Uh, feels like the most consistent thing about the Ravens this season has been their inconsistency. I certainly can understand why people are getting annoyed with these same issues with slow starts, the dodgy offensive line, et cetera, as the problems persist without much of a progressive solution being evident in our games. Anyway, with the remaining division game still ahead of us, how many wins against the other AFC North teams do you think we will likely need to secure first place, taking into consideration the form of the other AFC North teams? Do you still see us as favorites for the AFC North? Personally, I think we will get to the playoffs one way or another, but given our inconsistent form, I'm taking nothing for granted. Much peace and love to team keep it clean. So, Kev, do you feel like the Ravens, our favorites for the AFC North. You know, what What a division it is. And I think week 10 was probably <laughs> the worst week the AFC North probably could have had <laughs> with, with the Ravens losing to Miami, the, the Steelers tying with the Lions and the Browns mm -hmm. doing whatever they did against the Patriots. And, you know, I think the Ravens are still favorites in the AFC North. Cleveland is going through injuries themselves. Baker Mayfield is very beat up right now. And mm -hmm. it's a question of, you know, should he even be playing right now? You know, the Bengals, they took it to the Ravens at, in the Ravens' home stadium. But at the same time, I think they are very inexperienced and defensive issues have creeped up for them over the past couple of weeks before their bye after that Ravens game. And Pittsburgh, I think, goes as far as Ben Roethlisberger takes them. And I don't know really how far that is. In terms of how many wins against AFC North opponents from now on, the Ravens would need, you know, I say if they lose one of those games, they'll be in good shape. You know, the the, the Cleveland-Pittsburgh-Cleveland kind of three-game stretch there yeah. is a little difficult, especially yeah. considering Cleveland has Baltimore by Baltimore in that span. Yeah. So I could see them maybe dropping the Week 14 game in Cleveland. But I think that's okay because I still anticipate them beating Pittsburgh twice, although those are always unpredictable games and very close. Cincinnati, I think they'll want – their revenge and they'll, they'll get it in my opinion but I think if they lose one of those games even if they drop maybe two of them and then they pick up a win against one of those NFC teams and the Rams and the Packers I think they'll be in good shape but it's it's a tough back half of the schedule and you oh, know yeah. you talk about coming out of the bye you have the Vikings the Dolphins the Bears I was very big on them going three and oh in that stretch obviously they did not and they lose the one that arguably they couldn't lose in the Dolphins game because of the AFC opponent. So it just goes to show that, you know, we're talking about week 17, week 18, it could have big implications, but for now, I think the Ravens, all and also the favorites in the North. Shout out to Graven.